Have you ever sold a design project and then after you got started, the back and forth just dragged on and on and on? Actually, I got an idea. Roll the clip. Set until forever. 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 In this video, I want to talk about how I've been able to limit the scope creep in my design business as much as humanly possible. I think it's impossible to fully get scope creep out, but if you're going to be a good business owner, you got to learn how to actually get ahead of those things. So I want to talk about that and let's go ahead and jump right into it. So first you need to know what is scope creep. This is an important piece. It's not some weirdo in the corner or me with my crazy hair. It's actually a customer actually demanding more and more things. And so the simplest way I can explain this, it refers to changes and continuous growth within a project after it starts. So let me just give you a quick example, tell you a quick story. We had a client that we did a video project for, specifically an explainer video. And one of the first stages after we do our discovery meeting is to actually do storyboard. So we storyboarded the whole thing out, had a good idea of where we're gonna go, and then I wrote the script. I assumed that the client was gonna see the script and go, okay, cool, let's just change this and we're good to go, right? And keep it very clear. But lo and behold, the customer is a marketer as well, and he wanted to change that script. And he changed it to the point where now, instead of a minute and 10 seconds, the video is now a minute and 50 seconds. Well, every second of that video adds cost and time and it takes out of my bottom line. It reduces the profit that I make in that video. And so a lot of people will do this intentionally and sometimes unintentionally, and it will cost you a lot of money. So you gotta be very, very careful about scope creep. It can be very damaging to your business, but the key is, is in this one specifically, in this case, in this story, I did not want to increase the price on him because it was about the long term and the fact that I was gonna be t doing tons and tons of these videos but these can happen within every single design project and it's something that you really need to be aware of. So that just leads me to my first question. Have you ever dealt with scope creep? Even if you're a new designer, I know you know what this is like. I know you know what the pain of having to deal with constant revisions and changes like the design project that just never ends. It just keeps going on and on. I've dealt with more of those than I'd even like to admit, to be honest with you. And so scope creep is something that is very common in the graphic design industry and in a lot of businesses and most business trainers teach it within project management training. And so this is something that I wanted to teach you guys just to get a better handle on it because I'm working on improving these systems and processes myself within my business. So how do we prevent scope creep from actually happening? Well, that's a great question and that's what we're here to do. We're gonna talk about that. I actually wanna go step by step and kind of break down three things that you're gonna to need to know when it comes to dealing with scope creep. So make sure you have a pen and paper and get ready to take some notes. Step one, you need to have a crystal clear contract or agreement in my world or a clear proposal of everything that your project includes and everything that it doesn't include. You have to put the details in of what you expect from the client and what they should expect from you. Some things like how many revisions are included. This is a really important part of your scope. What's the turnaround time? How many changes, how many total revisions, but how many minor revisions do they get? Because minor revisions and major revisions are two completely different things. So you wanna separate those things and put together a clear terms and conditions so that the scope does not creep on you and become something way bigger. And it's gonna be something that's your foundation that you can always go back to and say, hey, look, this is not in the scope of work that we talked about. I'd be happy to do this for you, but here's an invoice for that, or here's a proposal for that. And then they can choose to change it or not. It's on them, so it's not on you. Step two is I want you to go through these agreements, proposals, terms and conditions, and all of this stuff with them one-on-one -on, -one on the phone or on Zoom or however you gotta do it in person, it doesn't matter. This is gonna help you stay out of that endless loop of changes, those endless loops of revisions, and it's gonna keep you from losing clients. Not having this done face-to-face -face with your client and making sure that they understand every single piece of it, it will cost you business. Even when it comes to hosting, when we build websites, we had issues in the past where a client goes, well, I didn't know I had to pay for hosting. I go, well, every website is hosted. It should be common sense, but common sense is not common. So I really want you to take that to heart that just because it's common to you and you know it because you're in the industry, it doesn't mean your customer understands it. So take the time, slow down your process a little bit. That's why you need to charge more. And that's why you can actually have more value and bring more value to the table because you, you slow the process down 
and actually give them a deeper understanding of how this is going to work. And this is what the customer truly wants at the end of the day. So this is really important. Make sure you go through it with them one on one. Step number three is communication. Probably the most important step in all this. You can't forget the other two, but this one is incredibly important. You need to actually have good communication with your clients because that's going to make or break the relationship, just like any relationship, businesses, personal, it doesn't matter. And by clearly stating, hey, this is outside of our scope of work that we agreed to, I'd be happy to do it, or simply just saying, no, I can't do it, especially if they say that they don't have the budget to pay you more, just saying, I'm sorry, it's not something I'm gonna be able to do. This is gonna be really important. You're gonna have to step out of your comfort zone. It's really, really, really important. I, I need to stress this to you. And so being able to have those two agreements or having those two conversations before this conversation happens is what's gonna be able to make sure that you can bring it back full circle and say, hey, remember the very beginning when we laid out the proposal and I went through everything that this was gonna include? Yeah, yeah, I remember that. Well, this is exactly why I do that because situations like this happen. So I just want you to approach these situations, not close-minded and just saying no, but just giving them the option. Say, hey, I'd be happy to do this, but it's gonna be X dollar amount more. I can go ahead and send you the invoice if you're ready to go ahead and have me do that. And if they say, no, I don't wanna do that, then respectfully decline and say, no, thank you. But you need to consider this. If you say no, there is the potential risk that you could lose that client. They could say, you know what? I'm not gonna deal with this person. And that can be a good thing or it could be a bad thing. So it's something you need to take into consideration. If you want to build a relationship with this person long-term and you're being super fair and they're not being understanding of that, you may want to just cut ties with that because that long-term relationship may not even be a real thing. To you, it may be, and they may have said they want a long-term relationship, but that doesn't always mean that it's true. So you need to make sure you have your stuff backed up with a solid agreement, a solid contract, terms and conditions to cover your tail. This is really important. The client needs to know it and you got to be able to hold you up your end of the bargain. The last piece I wanna just say about that is boundaries. If someone keeps pushing and is repetitively doing this to you on a regular basis, you need to set that boundary line and tell them you can't do it anymore. And if they continue to repeat it, that's when I would be going out there personally and trying to find a new client and just telling them, hey, I made an exception for you last time and I told you last time that this was an exception, that this wasn't gonna happen all the time, but you just need to make sure that you're just very fair, very honest and very clear about what you expect and what your boundaries are. So now's the time where you can do me a huge favor. If you're finding this content helpful, please do me a huge favor, drop a like button down below, introduce yourself, and also hit that subscribe button so you can get notified of all the content that we're putting out. I thank you guys for watching and make sure you join us at the Instagraphics Pro Network on Facebook. I'd love to see you there. We have some great stuff coming up, including our first virtual event. So thank you guys so much for watching. I'm Adrian Boisel, and as always, keep looking up.